Let's pray and jump into the river. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening, morning time here as the day breaking here. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy that you said your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who have joined this class, Father, discovering purpose, calling, and gifts. We thank you for your purpose. We thank you for the calling upon our life. We thank you for the gifts and potential that you deposited into our spirit man, into our body, into our mind. Help us to develop, maximize it, and to put a demand on it, Father. I thank you for clarity. For somebody here, Father, clarity on what direction they should go. I thank you, Lord, for your grace. Lord Jesus, you are the teacher. Come and teach and make it so plain and simple and clear so that we can understand it and run with it. Open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to understand, to see, Father. Pour out the spirit of revelation and wisdom upon your people, Father. And we cancel every assignments of the enemy. Every hearts and eyes are open and ears to receive, to understand, Father. We love you. We bless you. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you for restoring us back to our purpose. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus Christ's holy name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bearing witness with power and glory in our hearts. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. The further, you know, this is what the Holy Spirit gave me to put it on Facebook yesterday, and I did this. The further we or an individual or a creation moves away from God's purpose. Confusion, chaos, lack, and pain are the results. The further a person, a creation, or anything that God created moves away from his purpose, what are the results? Confusion, chaos, lack, and pain are the results. And that's what happened to mankind. That is the reason of so much pain, chaos, disorder, confusion. People, they don't know who they're anymore. Gender confusion. Confusion about their purpose even. Everything that happening because we have moved away from God's original purpose. Your provision is in the place of your purpose. And, and we were not raised on purpose. I'm going to say something that's going to make us sad, maybe mad, <laughs> maybe upset, but I have to say it. We were not raised on purpose. We were raised to survive. To be honest with you, we were raised to serve money, mammon, with our life. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, he said, there are two masters. There are only two masters in this world. One is God. One is money. Who are we serving? Whom did we serve with the most of our life? We thought we were serving God because we went to church for two hours on a Sunday or a Wednesday night and have another Bible study or uh, something else. But our entire life, our breath was given to us to establish and to fulfill God's assignment. That's why we are here. That's why we are breathing. Not just two hours on a Sunday morning, not just on a Wednesday evening service, our entire life from beginning till the end, for all eternity, we were kingdom substance. We were kingdom people, kingdom builders, God's kingdom builders. And God promised to provide just like he did for Adam. Adam didn't work for his food. Adam didn't ask God for a garden. Adam didn't ask God for his clothing. Adam did not ask God for nothing. 
because whatever Adam would need to fulfill his God-given assignment, it was the Father's responsibility to provide. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8 and 32. Please write those two verses down. Matthew chapter 6, verse 8 and 32, Jesus said, your heavenly father knows that you need of these things before you ask him. So to understand Matthew 6, we have to understand Genesis, God's original blueprint. Do not worry about what you're going to eat. Do not worry about where you're going to live. Do not worry about what you're going to wear. Jesus is referring back to God's original design for mankind. Then only Matthew 6 will make sense. Otherwise, in this day and age, how can, I not, how can a person not worry? How can we live without worrying, concerned about our food, where you're going to live, what you're going to wear? You know what I mean? It's impossible. But when we look at Matthew 6 in the light of Genesis 1 and 2, God's original blueprint for mankind, all of a sudden, it makes sense. Why would Jesus say, don't worry about what you're going to eat? Because when God created Adam, God's original intent was he didn't have to worry about his food, his clothing, where he's going to stay. Because it is your father's responsibility. And then Jesus said, look at the birds. They are not sowing. They are not reaping. As I'm sitting here, I hear the birds chirping. It's about 5.39 in the morning here. They're happy. And Jesus said, your heavenly father feeds them all. Why? Because the birds are in the place of their domain. That's why Jesus pointed the birds to us. Look at them. They're doing what they were created to do. And as long as a creation is doing what they created to do, my dear people of God, this is what God wants you to receive and run with this. As long as a creation is doing what it was created for, they won't have to worry about where they are going to find what they need in their life. As long as they're doing what they were created to do. As I said earlier, we were not raised up to fulfill our purpose. Many of us, including myself, we're misinformed about our purpose. As, as I mentioned last class, I think all these preachers came and told us, you have a purpose and Mary has a purpose and Susan has a different purpose and Jack has something different purpose. And then all of us, nobody told us what's our purpose. <laughs> Hi, Danny, welcome. And we spent billions of dollars on the subject, discovering purpose. Oh my goodness. Discovering purpose is not a mystery. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to discover the purpose of mankind. Just read the manual. <laughs> Just read the manual given to us by the creator. You don't need to read 20,000 books on purpose. You don't need to attend five different conferences and seminars on discovering purpose, the first chapter of our manual, God's book, the Bible reveals, that is the purpose chapter. Chapter one of Genesis is purpose chapter. That's where God reveals the purpose of everything he created. And that is God's original blueprint. We thought it was a story, Creation story, right? That's what the Sunday school taught us, the creation story. Oh, and, and, and we saw this picture, Adam and Eve hiding behind the bush and a snake hanging from a tree and Eve holding an apple. <laughs> and that's the picture that comes to our mind, the creation story. It's not the creation story. It is the purpose chapter. Genesis chapter one. And we missed it left and right. So now... And we have created this mess out of life on the earth and we're blaming the devil and we're blaming our father-in-law and mother-in-law and we are kicking the dog. It's not going to solve the problem. We are blaming 
the Democrats or the Republicans. It's not going to solve the problem. What, go, what is going to solve the problem is when we return. When we return, the word re means do it again. When we return to our original purpose, the church, the people of God. So last week, we mentioned about, we studied about what is the importance of purpose, why we should study about purpose, and what was in the mind of God when he created mankind. As we heard, God defines his purpose when he creates something. He doesn't wait for 200 years or 2,000 years, not even an hour to tell what he created, what he's expecting from it. So he made it very clear about humans. Let us create man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion. That's our purpose. And every one of us, humans, mankind, has one purpose, which is dominion. But that dominion has sevenfold dimensions. That's what we're going to learn today. Sevenfold purposes. It's not seven purposes, sevenfold purposes. Means that one purpose manifests in different, because God didn't just say, let them rule the planet. That's not what he said. He didn't say, let them govern the, or manage the planet. He said, let them have dominion. That word dominion is a very complex Hebrew word. And we don't hear that much about, only in the kingdom context do you hear that word. Only in the kingdom context you will understand the meaning of that word dominion. So that is our first and foremost purpose, which is dominion, the sevenfold purpose. But within that one purpose, we have seven dimensions to it. So I don't want you to get confused thinking, oh, I have seven purposes. No, we have only one, which is dominion. But that one purpose is manifest in many ways, the manifold or the manifold wisdom of God concerning mankind. Like in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, I think the Bible says that, that the wisdom of, no, the manifold wisdom of God might be known to the principalities and powers through the church. So God's wisdom is not one direction. He is multitudes, many unidirectional. So the second fold purpose under that dominion is for us to function as a gate of heaven. What is a gate of heaven? A gate means, a gate is something that gives or denies access. You might have heard people say, God is in control, brother. Don't worry about anything. God is in control, right? <laughs> but I want to tell you, God is not in the controlling business. God didn't control Adam when he decided to eat the fruit that he said not to eat. When mankind decided to drop the bomb in Japan, God was not in control. It was man who decided that. When mankind decided same-sex marriage is okay, God didn't step in and say, no, you can't do that. He let them. Why? Because in Genesis chapter 1, 26, he said, let them have dominion. Let them decide what needs to be done in relation to earth. So ever since mankind has a choice to open or give access to God to intervene on the affairs of the earth or not. We have an option. We have a choice to tell God, no, we, tell, we can tell God, we don't want you here. We don't want you rule. We don't want you reign. We don't want your kingdom. 
we want to do our own thing that's what adam and eve did in the garden they decided to declare independence from god's kingdom god's alignment god's provision and they said we don't want your kingdom we don't want your assignment we don't want your provision we don't want your provision. somebody's microphone is on and they said we don't want any of those things we are going to make this happen by ourselves we are going to build our life we are going to build our destiny we are going to be the captain of our own destiny we are going to take life into our own hands we are going to manufacture our own goods and products and food and assignment and purpose and everything else and here we are after 6000 years absolute mess <laughs> absolute mess chaos disorder poverty anger sickness pandemic my goodness you name it divorce abortion what is what is the reason because we declared independence from god and his kingdom so instead of allowing god to intervene on the affairs of the earth and mankind do you know what mankind did they decided to be a gate for the devil and his kingdom oh my goodness imagine the pain the father god has to experience the people the creation the children that he created in his own image supposed to be partnering with him to accomplishing his purpose rebelled against him and made themselves available to his enemy and then doing his will my lord my god have mercy so a gate is something that gives or denies access if ever since genesis 126 this is another statement that i wanted to capture in your heart ever since god transferred the right to rule the earth to mankind god decided to work in partnership with mankind any major thing that happened on the earth god chose to work in partnership with a human god is looking for partners the greatest prayer you can pray in you pray in your life is lord make me part of what you're doing on the earth today make me part of what you're doing in my community in my nation instead of asking and begging god to bless this bless that bless what i'm doing bless what my mama is doing find out what god is blessing and become part of it what is he blessing what is he doing on the earth today is he sitting on the park and singing kumbaya where is god he never sleeps he never slumbers he's always doing something but we have invented many devices like solomon said god made everything perfect but we came up with devices i was so busy trying to build a ministry trying to build the biggest church in my hometown i wanted to have a tv ministry i wanted to have a radio ministry oh my lord my god i almost not i almost those ministry projects almost killed me and i thought i was serving god i was not serving god i was building a kingdom for abraham john that was my intention that was my motive and i was using god i was telling god what to do lord bless this project lord bring 20000 dollars for the school lord bless this tv ministry to reach millions of people lord that was my prayer life <laughs> telling god what to do oh my god my god he got me free from this nonsense it is madness
Oh my God, my God. I feel his glory and his weight. And all those churches, pastors, network, TV ministry, radio ministry, it's all gone. He brought me back to his kingdom. Now I'm partnering with God in what he's doing. And the weight is on his shoulders, not on my shoulders. I don't have not even 1% of the stress I used to have now, five years ago. But I, I'm a human, you know what I mean? We think about, we worry about, and we try to figure things out. But I don't even have that 1% of stress now, which I used to have when I was running all these ministry projects. And it was up to me to find the resources for all these things. Now, I just mention a need, the provision comes. I just mentioned one example last Sunday. I, you know, I'm here in India now setting up this kingdom school. This is what God is blessing now, the kingdom school. So we have a facility here, 8,000 square feet building. It's been laying empty for five years. Remember all those ministry projects I was doing? <laughs> I shut everything down. And this building was laying empty. Now, since we started this kingdom school, and he said, now is the time to launch the kingdom school in that facility. So I came here to clean it up, to paint it, to remodel it, to restructure it, and do all those things. And, and it is going good. God's grace, what I could do in six months, he's doing it in three weeks. So I needed a generator, you know, in India, the power is not reliable. Three times a day, four times a day, sometimes the power just goes, it just goes and we are in the dark. Thank God the power didn't go in any of these classes I have since. So I wanted to have a generator, generator to back up in case the power goes out when I'm teaching, when I'm doing a kingdom school or ecclesia or something. So the Wi-Fi can keep working, the computer can keep working. So I just mentioned, Lord, I need it. Thank you for that generator. And I mentioned that somebody said, here's the money. I don't have to stress about it. I don't have to worry about it. It is there. Now I need to figure out how to bring that money here to buy it here. That is my pain now. <laughs> not to find the resources. Oh my Lord, my God. As long as a creation is doing what God created them to do, it is God's responsibility to provide for them. That's why Jesus said, look at the birds, look at the lilies, because they are doing, they are at the place where God put them. So I don't know why I'm saying that. Somebody needs to hear that. So the second uh, fold purpose of mankind to function as a gate to heaven. We supposed to open the gate for God to manifest his work on the earth. So we have an option. Either we can open the gate for God or for the enemy. Unfortunately, Adam shut the door, the gate to God and he opened the door wide and clear for the devil and his kingdom to come into this planet earth to create all this and mankind decided to partner with the devil. And that's why I said most people serve the kingdom of darkness with the majority of their time and their life for provision. And it is very sad. The third fold purpose of dimension or third fold definition, dimension of dominion is to provide legal access to God. What does that mean? Again, Genesis 126, God said, let them. God included himself in the creating part of humans but when he handed over the right to rule, he did not include himself. He said, let them, who's them, the humans, have dominion. Let them rule. And ever since, 
If God wants to do something on the earth, he needed a representative. He need a human to partner with him. He need a human to give him legal access to do anything on the earth because God keeps his word. Once God speaks, he limits himself to that word. He will never break his word, his promise, his covenant. So we see this in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19. After he transferred the right of rulership to mankind in Genesis 1.26, this is a very interesting but powerful verse to notice. In Genesis 2.19, the Bible says, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam, his son. Wow. Can you imagine almighty God created all these creatures, maybe millions, thousands of species, worms and butterflies and dogs and cats and lions and giraffe and thousands of kinds of fish in the ocean, and he brought them all to Adam. For what? To see what he would call them. Why? Because ever since he transferred the right of rulership, anything related to the earth realm has been committed to mankind's jurisdiction. That is also a powerful thing to write down. Everything related to the earth realm has been committed to mankind's jurisdiction. What is, what is jurisdiction? The legal authority to decide in relation to earth. It has been given to mankind. So God Almighty created everything because he's the creator. Adam cannot create any creatures. God created it, but they belong to the earth. So when it comes to the earth, it is Adam's responsibility. It is, it is under his jurisdiction to name it or kill it or whatever he wants to do with it. So he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. Can you imagine God waiting for Adam to complete this project. I don't know how long it took for Adam to name all these millions of species of creation, creatures. Maybe three days, four days, I don't know. But God waited that long to see what Adam would do, what Adam would call. And the Bible says, whatever Adam called, each living creature, each living creature, that was his name. God did not intervene into Adam's responsibility. God did not correct Adam in anything. Oh, Adam, don't call that elephant that thing. Call him uh, something else. No, God did not intervene into man's affairs, means man's responsibility. And whatever... Adam called. Say whatever Adam called. That is, a, that is an important phrase because you need this for the next verse that we are going to look upon. Whatever Adam called. If he called a monkey, monkey, donkey, the donkey would have been the monkey. Whatever he called, it became its name because everything related to the earth realm has been committed to man's jurisdiction. And imagine we are spending our life wondering whether God loves us or whether we belong on this planet Earth or am I going to fly away pretty soon to another somewhere? I'm going to walk on the streets of gold and Jesus is building a mansion for me. What happened to us? <laughs> When everything related to this earth has been committed to our jurisdiction, just like Jesus said, look at the birds, I will say, look at the heathens. Look at the heathens, how they're doing it. 
how they're living. They're deciding when it comes to the jurisdiction of the earth. The heathens, the wicked have more sense concerning their purpose and their assignment than most believers. I'm sorry to say that. Heathens have more sense of their purpose than most Christians do. And you will say, Abraham, that is Old Testament. What about the New Testament? Didn't Jesus say, sing three songs and take an offering, then go out to lunch? No, that's not what he said. Because God never changes his purpose. Please write that down. He never changes the purpose of anything. The birds are still flying. The sun is still shining. The dog is still barking. The monkey is still climbing the trees. And he never will change the purpose of whatever he created. It will continue to do. That's why God says, his word says, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Otherwise, you can't trust him if he keep changing his mind concerning our purpose. So in Matthew 16, 19, Jesus said this, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. This is, again, Jesus transferring the right to rule to the church. Just like God did to Adam in Genesis, Jesus comes back to restore what the first Adam lost. So he has nothing new to tell us. Jesus has nothing new. The same thing what he told Adam, Jesus telling the church, I'm going to give you the keys. Keys what? The right to rule, the authority of my kingdom to exercise it on the earth. I'm going to give it to you, mankind, because it is given to you by God. And I can't change it. I can add anything to it. I have to stick with the blueprint. I have to stick with God's original design for you guys. I have nothing new to offer. And we got stuck with all these petty issues and doctrines that we argue and bicker about in church. And we missed the big picture. We have been minoring on the majors and majoring on the minors. What kind of clothes and color you wear and what kind of makeup you should put on on a Sunday morning and uh, the gown for the choir, you know, where they should stand, what kind of movement they should move, you know, when they sing a particular note and when the devil is stealing right and left from their home while they are moving their choir and trying to adjust the light, what kind of color should come when they hit the perfect note. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> and then they go and eat the pork chops after. I'm sorry, guys. This is heavy, heavy materials. Jesus said, I will give you. I will stop right now. I won't say any more like that. Sorry. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and what Ever, that's that word that I was looking that God said in Genesis 2 19 to Adam whatever Adam called whatever you permit on earth that's what Jesus is saying bind means permit it's a legal term and we have been we thought Jesus meant bind the demons we have been binding demons we have been binding our neighbors and in-laws and outlaws Whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. And whatever you forbid on earth, that is what lose means. How do I know? Please read different translations and you will understand what I'm talking about. Whatever you permit on the earth, whatever you forbid on the earth, it will be forbidden in heaven. Actually, the bind is forbidding Losing is permitting. Whatever you forbid on the earth, it will be forbid in heaven. Whatever you permit on earth will be permitted by heaven. Heaven cannot do anything. It is the mankind who holds the key. Jesus gave that keys to the church to decide. 
to decide if same-sex marriage is okay, if you say that is okay by the government, then I have to approve it in heaven. But if the church raises up some righteous politicians and put them as presidents, then it won't happen. That is a whole different subject. Number four, protect the earth. The fourth dimension of dominion is to protect the earth from satanic intrusion. That is a biggie. Oh my Lord, my God, are you ready for this? See, God and Satan are spirit beings. Demons are spirit beings. Holy Spirit is spirit. They don't have physical bodies like we do. So the only creatures who have the legal right to do anything on the earth are creatures with physical bodies. That is why God gave us our body. Our body makes us legal on the earth. The moment you lose your body, you become illegal on the earth. No spirit without a body are authorized by God to operate on the earth. Any spirit wants to do anything on the earth, they require a body, a physical body. That is the law of nature. So the moment we lose our body, we become illegal. We have to leave this planet. And the only time we get re-entry permit is when we get our body back after resurrection. Then we get again the re-entry permit to this earth. So Satan is a spirit. Demons are a spirit being unclean spirits, demonic spirits. They needed a body to become legal on the earth. So before Adam was created, Satan had access to this earth because Satan had, uh, let me see what I should say. <laughs> you need to read some of my books, The Gospel of the Kingdom. You have to understand the history of the earth before Adam and how Satan received access to this earth before the fall. But he had no right to do anything because he didn't have any body. He is a spirit. So God created Adam, gave him the right to rule and told him, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. The first thing God told mankind to have dominion over is over the fish. How did fish or how does fish any danger to mankind they are in the water then he said let them have dominion over the birds of the air how come birds be any danger to mankind over the cattle the cows over every creeping things that creeps on the earth why because these creatures have a body birds have a body cattle have a body creeping things have a body and the fish has a body so God was telling Adam, guys, Adam, my son, if you see any rebellion, if you hear anything different than what I have told you from any of these creatures or any source, you have to subdue. Subdue means make them submit by force. Don't listen to them. If you notice any absorbing to your authority or rebellion to your authority, or if anybody say anything different than what I have told you, you should not listen. You should subdue it. Make them submit by force and put them where they belong. Tell the fish to go back to the water because that's where they belong. Because God was warning Adam, preparing Adam about the enemy but the enemy is a spirit and he needs a body. The only creatures that was there to give Satan a body are those creatures God listed because Adam was the only human. There were no other humans at that time. 
and Adam was not going to give devil access at that time until he was deceived. So which creature Satan chose to give him a body? The serpent. Because the Bible says serpent was more cunning than any other creatures God has made. So Satan came to the serpent and serpent gave Satan a body and Satan became legal to be on the earth, to come into the garden. That is the first right he received to come into the garden. He received a body to come to Adam and Eve to talk to them. Then he deceived Adam and Eve and he stole the right of rulership from Adam and Eve. Their birthright was stolen from them. That is the second deception this devil came up with. So it was man's responsibility to protect Take the earth from satanic intrusion even today. That's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. I give unto you power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt to you. So what the devil stole from the first Adam God sent another Adam called Jesus Christ, the last Adam. He came and received, took back what the first Adam lost. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18 and 19. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That word authority means the right to rule. All authority to rule, the right to rule in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. He is a human. Jesus is a human, but he is God also. He has a body. And we are called the body of Christ. Why? Because we made Christ legal on the earth. That's why we are called the body of Christ. We provide him a body. We make Christ legal. If Christ wants to do something in our governments, he needs a body. Who will make him legal in the government? But he can't find any. If Christ wants to do something in the media, he is looking for a body that is trained, but he can't find anybody. If Christ wants to do anything in the agriculture of a nation, he needs a body or a group of bodies who will make him legal. That's what we should be training in the church, equipping the saints, not to speak gibberish, but to give God the legal right to come into the affairs of people and to manifest, demonstrate God and his kingdom. And we have wide opened the door for the devil in every sphere of society. Government is gone. Media is gone. Agriculture is gone. We have been eating the poison they produce. Uh, manufacturing is gone. Businesses are gone and we are waiting to disappear. What if we had done that 500 years ago? The fifth dimension of dominion simply means to rule the earth. The right of rulership of the earth has been given to mankind. Nowhere in the Bible, God said to his people, I don't want you to rule. Where in the New Testament? Show me one scripture that Jesus is telling the church, I don't want you to be in politics. I don't want you to be rulers or governors or city council. I just want you to sit and sing to me three songs. and put some colorful lights for me so I can be happy in heaven. Jesus did not give us a guitar. Jesus gave us the keys of his kingdom. Rule the earth, he told mankind. Rule for me, on behalf of me, and with me, and invite me to the affairs of your life. You know, there are five incidents in the Bible where 
where a human said to God, we don't want your rulership. We don't want your kingdom. First, it happened in the garden through the deception. And many times during the Israel's kingdom in the promised land, they rebelled against God. On one particular incident is when they came and asked Samuel for a king. And Samuel went to God and said, hey, these people are asking for a king. What should I do? You know what God said? Give them a king because they are not rejecting you. They are rejecting me from reigning over them, ruling over them. So we have a choice to tell God to stay out of our affairs or invite him to be part of what we are doing on the earth. When Jesus went to cast out a demon of a demoniac in the land of gatherings, you know, the legion, we know the story. He set him free. And do you know the people of that town came and said, they didn't celebrate this great thing Jesus did for this man. They didn't bring lunch and coffee for him. They came out and said, we don't want you here in our region. Go back. And Jesus and the disciples got back into the boat and went to the other side of the town. The another time we see is at the, at, with the pilot, when Jesus was going through the um, sentencing, Pilate said, this is your king. And do you know what the Jewish people said? We have no king but Caesar. They rejected his kingdom. They rejected his kingship. And now the church is saying, we don't want Jesus and his rulership on the earth. The church is the one who is preventing God's kingdom from manifesting. It is so sad to say it. We said, we, don't, we want to go to heaven. We want to, there, we want to be there. We don't want our responsibility on the earth that you gave to us. We are tired of this. The sixth. <laughs> and Linda is thinking, oh, I should not have taken this course. This guy is bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much, right? Somebody has to say it, my brothers, my sisters. Somebody has to do it. You cannot just say, God bless you and give you tithe and everything is going to be okay. No. You cannot. I cannot do it. God didn't call me to do that. then come back next Sunday and do it again. I cannot do that. I'm sorry. That is not my assignment from God. Maximize and manage the resources of the earth. That is our responsibility. Another dimension of dominion. Maximize, cultivate, develop, and manage the resources. This earth is full of God's resources abundance of God. We have been digging out gold ever since Adam walked on the earth. We haven't exhausted gold or diamond or oil or minerals, or we have been sowing and reaping from the earth and eating. We haven't exhausted its resources, its potential. It still continues to give. The water we drink, we're still drinking it ever since Adam walked on the earth. The air that we breathe, we messed up the quality of things because of mismanagement. That's why it is our responsibility to maximize, manage the resources. If we don't manage this earth, God will destroy us. I guarantee you, it's in his word. One of the, one of the words that I couldn't believe in the New Testament is Revelation chapter 11, verse 18, where it says, when Jesus comes back, he will destroy those who destroy the earth. I couldn't believe it. If he is keep, he, if he's keeping this earth to be burned, why would he kill people who destroy the earth? Because God is committed to his creation, is this earth. We were created for the earth. Earth was not created for us. We were created to manage, to maximize, to develop man and establish his kingdom and his will on the earth. One day we have to give an account. That is the parable Jesus said, 
A nobleman went to a far country to receive a kingdom. He called his servants and gave him his land to manage. The seventh fold dimension of dominion is to glorify and worship God. Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 4, Father, I have glorified you by finishing the work that you gave me to do. That's how we glorify God and worship. How did the people worship God? How did Abraham worship God? How did Moses worship God? How did Paul worship God? And I have written extensively on it to correct our misunderstanding about worship on the book that you have about purpose, calling, and gifts. Now, since our purpose is established, we are going to look at the functions of mankind. What is the difference between function and purpose? Purpose is the reason of existence. Function is the built-in process that helps us fulfill that purpose. So that is the difference between purpose and function. Please don't get confused. Just because something is functioning, that doesn't mean it's fulfilling its purpose. A car's purpose, an automobile's purpose is transportation. But it has different functions. It has an engine, it has a brake, it has seats, it has lights and all kinds of gadgets we think of today. What if we turn the car on for three hours a day? It keep running, but it's not taking anybody anywhere. That car is functioning, but it's not fulfilling its purpose. We can function and not fulfill our purpose. There are eight fundamental functions of humans. Number one, mankind was created for relationship with God and other people. We are relational beings. We can't function without relationship. The greatest blessings and challenges comes from relationships. Every other relationship we have is a reflection of our relationship with God. If we believe that God doesn't love us, then we won't love anybody else. We won't even love ourselves. If we believe God doesn't accept us, we won't accept anybody else. Because every other relationship is a reflection of how we deal with God or how we believe God is dealing with us. That is how we will deal with other people. If we think God is mean, we will be mean to other people. If, God, if we believe God is stingy, we will be stingy. Because we are created in his image and likeness of God. Number two, function, fundamental function of mankind is mankind was created to work or achieve, especially for a man. His work is important. If a man is not satisfied with his work, he's not happy at his work, nothing will make him happy. I'm sorry, ladies. If a man is not happy in what he's doing, if he's not finding fulfillment in his work, doesn't matter what you do for him, that won't hit the spot. Because that's the way God designed a man. But to a woman, relationship is important. Doesn't matter how much big a house she lives in, if her relationship is not in the right order, she won't be happy. It could be a mansion or it could be a whatever. So God gave man the work before he gave him a family. So that's why man is so committed to his work, 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 work. And, and woman wants to connect, 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 relationship. So there's the conflict. He, she doesn't want him to work. She just wants him to stay with her and hugs and buy her gifts and bring her flowers. <laughs> and this man wants to go and work. <laughs> And she said, honey, don't go to work today. Just stay with me. And no. So God gave man work before he gave my family. 
Wife was the last thing God gave to Adam. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Mankind was created to expand and multiply and grow. Whatever we do, we want to grow. We want to expand. We want to multiply. That's where the kingdoms of old went to colonize other nations on the earth because they want to expand. They want to multiply. They want to grow. Whatever we do, that is our nature. That is the way God is. If you give five, he wants 10 back. If he gave us two, he wants four back. If he gave us one, if you give that one back, oh my God, you watch out. <laughs> he won't be a happy kid. <laughs> happy God, actually. We are constantly looking for new horizons. Why we are trying to go to Mars? We went to the moon. Because we want to explore, we want to expand. That's our nature. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. We will study in detail what each of those phrases mean. Be fruitful, that's the first commandment God gave to mankind. Multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. That is the process of dominion. The fourth fundamental function of Humans are mankind was created to manifest the glory of God. What is the glory of God? Is that a, just a feeling? Is that just a goosebump we feel sometime? No. The first time the word glory appears is in Genesis chapter 45, verse 13, in relation to a man. It was Joseph who is used that word for the first time. When a word is mentioned for the first time in the Bible, it means something, the law of first reference. This is what Joseph told his brothers. You shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt. <laughs> what was his glory in Egypt? He was functioning in a maximized state in Egypt. All his servants, every land in Egypt was under his management. Every resources in Egypt was under his management. He was second in command in the whole land of Egypt because Egypt was the superpower. He can just order it. He can get it done. Thousands and hundreds of servants standing to take his orders. And that was his glory. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen and you shall hurry and bring my father down here. So glory, is, glory of something is when it functioning in its maximized state. When it says the glory of God means all that he is, his goodness, his mercy, his love, his wisdom, his power, his greatness, his riches, all that combined, it's called the glory of God. That's what Jesus said, look at the lilies of the field. Not even Solomon in all his glory arrayed like one of those little flowers. The fifth function of mankind is mankind was created to subdue and conquer. The key to fulfilling your purpose is in understanding the principle of subdue. What does that mean? Any time you set out to do something good, you will have to encounter, you will encounter resistance. The law of resistance is a law even before the fall. That's why God said subdue. That means there is going to be resistance on the earth. If you try to exercise, there's going to be resistance. If you try to learn an instrument, that instrument will fight against you. Whatever your discipline you try to build, you have to overcome resistance. You have to subdue it. Not people, but the earth and its elements. The sixth function of mankind is mankind was created to function like God because we are just like our father. We carry the same DNA. We are created in the same image and likeness of God. 
What God is in heaven, we are on the earth. He creates and rules. That's why man likes to establish, to build. But we're supposed to be building God's kingdom. I want to show you a video. You know, the Bible says, you might have seen it on Facebook or other social media, how a little guy tried to imitate. That's what we should be doing with God. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Just like a little boy tried to imitate his daddy, that's why, that's why we're supposed to be imitating God in our life. So watch this video, what this little guy is doing. Oh my goodness, I could just watch that all day. You know what? Ever that man, it's actually it's the Rocky movie. He's trying to do this little kid, try to imitate him. That's what we should be doing with God. Whatever God is doing, however he functions, whatever he says, we're supposed to imitate him as dear children, does it, to a father. That is a part of our function. Seventh function of mankind is mankind was created to manifest and represent God on the earth. We are his legal representatives. We are his ambassadors. God wants each of us to be a king over something, rule over something. Paul says we are ambassadors. Ambassadors is a representative of a country or a government speaking on behalf of them to a foreign country, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. The eighth and the last function of mankind, mankind was created to glorify God by accomplishing the works he created us to do. There are certain works that was prepared by God for us before we arrived on this planet Earth. We glorify God by fulfilling the works he has prepared for us because we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Good works means not charitable works, giving out free food and all the clothes. Good work is a Greek word for enterprise, business, or anything that you do with your hand. Ergon, that is the Greek word that is used. There's another word for charitable works in Greek. 
For you bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Other functions, worship, loving one another, prayer, eating, fellowship, sharing, lifting hands, caring, studying, forgiving, drinking coffee is also part of our function. Are all part of our function, not our purpose. There is only one purpose. And next week, when we come back, we are going to explore further on the law of dominion. Dominion is a law, just like gravity is a law. And when you apply that, you will see the result of it. So, Father, we thank you for this great lesson, impartation, revelation that you poured into our life, Father. Help us to understand, to decipher this information. Let it not get lost in the business of our life. When we go back tomorrow, Father, I thank you, lest the seed of thy word that is planted in our hearts will bring forth 30, 60, and 100-fold return. We love you, we honor you. I rebuke the enemy. You will not steal this word from the hearts of my brothers and sisters. And they will impart it to others. And their life will never be the same again, Father. And we give you all the glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus Christ's holy name, pray. Everybody say it. Amen, amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Hope everybody's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. I have to. I have no other choice to say because we created such a mess with our life on the earth, in our nation. And we cannot just do everything what we used to and see everything is going to be okay. It's not going to be okay. We have to make a U-turn. We have to make a U-turn and do what God created us to do. So thank you so much. Any comments, questions, feedback? I saw, is it is it Aries? What is Danny's husband's name? I, I, please unmute. Okay. I'm sorry. There he is. Good we to love see. it here. We're just trying to learn our purpose. We're going to do a 180 degree turnaround to get going in the right direction. Amen. 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 We love this place. We love your teaching also. Thank you. Thank you for not crucifying me. <laughs> now, did, did you say it's 5.30 in the morning where you're at? It was when I started. Now it is 6.40. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. Now it's well, that's wonderful. So I had to get up at 4 in the morning to get ready for the school. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you're, oh. you're an angel. So it's a sacrifice for me. So for you guys are, you know, a wonderful evening there. That's good. Because I'm an Indian now. Thank you. With this assignment. So pray for me, please. And pray for my family. Yes. Yeah. We will. Thank you. Thank you. God hears our prayers. Yeah. Okay. Now it's your turn to. Okay. Do you I, have I, that was my speaking. <laughs> Look, see, this is pointing to the ceiling. Anybody has any comments, questions, feedback? Sharon, welcome. Charles Red, welcome, my brother. Say something. Okay, good. Well, this evening where I'm at. So good evening, everyone. Um, I think this session was a very powerful and impactful session. There are two things that uh, stood out to me significantly. Uh, the question of gate. Um, we being gate point of access or portals in the earth. And I think it raises the question of the significance of every individual, how important we are to the purpose of God. And uh, that cannot be downplayed. And I think that was really amplified when you talked about the question of purpose and function, uh, the reason for existence, the reason for my existence is to be a portal 
for the expression of his kingdom in the earth. And I think that is a significant bombshell and, and, and it carries immense weight and it makes just sense as to why I commit my life to Jesus Christ. Just wanted to give that comment. Amen. Thank you. That's excellent. You know, there are gate, gates of heaven, there are gates of hell. That's what Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates, it's a plural word. It's not just a one gate. There are many gates of hell is operating in every country on this planet Earth. And the church's assignment is to overthrow, to close those gates. Remember, one of the dimension of dominion is protect the earth from satanic intrusion. Close the doors, close those gates from them gaining any entrance or legal right to, to accomplish their evil intent agenda. But those gates are wide open now. We have a long way to go. But thank you, Chadbert. You always bring something significant comment and feedback. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Anybody else have any question? Of course, Katie has something, you know. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> Uh-oh. The moment you start talking, the phone goes off, the Wi-Fi. Oh, no. Can you hear me? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, was, I knew if I started singing, it would come on because I'm a horrible singer, not really. So, um, you know, when you talked about um, when everybody was saying, crucify him, crucify him, you know, to Jesus, I was thinking about the, the man in the tombstones with the legion of um, evil spirits in him, the legion. And um, the same thing happened. You know, nobody wanted Jesus around. He worked these miracles and nobody wanted him around. And that's the way people are today, you know. And if I don't get blubbed out again by my internet, I got to get some things to plug in the wall. Um, when I first started these classes, there was a man next door that was actually a murderer. And I didn't know it. And I just kept hearing profanity. And I was feeling, I live in the country, feeling kind of uncomfortable just praying over him. I didn't know he was a murderer, right? Praying the blood of Jesus all over his house. And within two weeks, he ended up going to Pittsburgh and actually killing someone. And the SWAT team invaded on his house, you know? And it's so crazy the way the Lord protects us when we know how to use our power in God, you know, it's God doing it, not me. But, you know, um, to me, that felt like closing a gate of hell, you know, because it was right next door to me. And I wasn't mean to him or anything, but when I like tried to give him food once, I just shaking his hand, I could feel it. And he didn't look evil. He just talked a lot of profanity kind of, which I don't like, you know, but, um, I think we have so much power in the name of Jesus that we can do so many wonderful things if we accept our self-identity in Christ. You know, I think we're able to do a lot, much more, at least I've learned in these classes, I have a lot more power in the name of God, not Katie's power, you know, by learning these things and using the power of prayer and rebuking, you know. So anyways, the guy, I didn't get me. I'm still alive. So who knows how many classes I'll take. I'm <laughs> Thank you, Abraham. You're welcome. Thank you. My internet sucks. Sorry, everybody. I'm going to find some plugs to put in the wall really soon because it sucks. But anyways, God is good. All the time. Esther, welcome, my sister. May I know where you're joining from? Can you hear me? Esther Alcindo. Are you there? Hi, hi. Blessings, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. 
I'm joining from Anguilla. I'm under Sister Gerdia and Brother John, the oh. Harrigans. Okay, okay, I got it. Thank you. Good to have you with us. Thank you. And Gerdia, welcome. Yes. Hi, Apostle John and all the saints on. It's such a great privilege to be on here and to learn so much about God and to learn what he's doing in the earth. I was very, I was very blessed with the teaching. I'm always blessed with the teaching because I always want to learn more. The one that stood out for me, a lot stood out for me, but what stood out for me is when you said, when you talk about maximizing and managing the resources, and that is something to, as the body of Christ, sometimes we drop the ball, we, we manage, but we don't maximize the opportunities that God gives us so that we can, you know, um, work, you know, and fulfill the purpose of why we were created. So I really, you know, put a, a big mark on that because I, I was, I was, when I saw that, it really jumped out at me. You know, many times God gives us opportunities, we just manage, but we don't maximize the opportunities that are given. So I'm very, you know, bless in being able to be on here with this course and I'm going to um, ask God that whatever I hear, that I'll put it into practice. I'll not just be a hearer, but also a doer, you know, in flowing in the purpose of which I was called. So God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So hope you have, everybody has the book. So please read the reading assignment, which I emailed you. It's on your email if you haven't received. Um, hello? Yes, Esther. Yes, unfortunately, I have not received my books. I don't know. I don't know why. Did you order them? Yes, yes. The purpose, calling and gifts? Yes. Oh, okay. So is it under your name, Esther Alcindor? Yes. Um, my email address is peachesandcream84 at gmail.com. Peaches and cream. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me go and check and see what happened. Okay, thank you. Did you order just this one or did you order both books? The three the most both of them. Both of them. Okay. I'm sorry about that. I will check That's that. That's okay. Thanks I much. You're welcome. Thank you. I hope everybody else has the books. And I will be posting this lesson on YouTube under the Kingdom School channel within 24 hours. I encourage you to watch it again and subscribe to the YouTube channel, please. And also we have a Kingdom School page on Facebook. So James, my son who edits this class and posts it, he leaves a link on Facebook. Those are on Facebook, so it is easy to click there. Then you can watch it from YouTube. So on Facebook, the page is called The Kingdom School. So send me a request and I will let you into that page. It's a private page only for the Kingdom School people. Okay, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. I will see you next week. Wonderful dreams tonight about your purpose, calling and gifts about God's kingdom. And I will see you next week, same time, same place. Bye-bye. Yes, bye-bye. God bless.